When I was asked about speaking and about speaking on this topic, Muse, I thought, no problem, it's cool. Creative people, artists, we have a long list of artists who've inspired us, whose shoulders we're standing on, whose quotes we look at and live by all the time. And I have a good story about one of my best muse, muses, it's coming. Um, but what I also wanted to make sure to say is that the word muse is also a verb. And I want to talk about that secondly. Uh, the word muse, I'm going to try to remember all the definitions, means to mull over, to ponder, to be absorbed in thought or reflection, to meditate on. And I think that's actually the key to this whole situation. This is the uh, wall that's in my studio right now. And I'm going to tell you my muse story right now. This is... <laughs> so similar. <laughs> this is our house in 2010. These are my little kids. This is uh, my daughter Sophie's room. She's like maybe at the time almost three. And she had been sent to time out. Uh, she didn't get the memo that time out means center yourself. <laughs> and get it together. Instead, you can see the uh, point from which she was standing and flinging all of these books from this bookshelf over here. Like, they're all going this way, you can see. Um, the, fun the funny story about this is I showed her this photo like two days ago, and she goes, Mom, I kind of remember that when you walked in and saw this, that's when I saw you cry for the first time. <laughs> I was like, I'm so sorry, baby. That wasn't the last, was it? I'm so sorry. <laughs> so we obviously had a lot of books. We had a lot of books. And um, we read all the time. Uh, we were sitting in this room about around this time. And I picked up this one, which someone had given us. This is about Georgia O'Keeffe. My name is Georgia, a portrait by Jeanette Winter. And we start flipping through it, and everything is like normal and regular. And then I come to this page, and my eyes popped out of my head. A lot of you guys know what it's like to be a parent to young kids. It is, you are like a ravaged person walking around. You have been ravaged by love, and you have been ravaged by exhaustion and you get like irrationally superstitious and you can like see germs everywhere, like you're crazy. And I was there kind of in that moment prowling around the perimeter of my world at that time with these wide open, my gaze was wide and it was so hungry. I was not in the studio in the way that I wanted to be. It was for like quick snippets. I wasn't painting that much. Every time I would start, you had to just interrupt and drop everything and, and go back to life. So that was the state I was in when I saw this image. And here it is closer. This is an image, a picture of Georgia O'Keeffe looking out of a window. And I saw her hair. And it was the round shape. And then there was a round shape underneath it. And whatever it was, that shape took me totally in. So I was imagining like my eyes burning a hole into this page. There were like lasers coming out of my eyes. They were going into that picture and then they were coming back into my body and then going back into that picture and then going in my brain. And it was like these, it like knitted itself to me. And it became this portal that I both like went down into and was all of a sudden a part of me. And I can't even really now describe exactly why I was so arrested by that image, but there was probably something about, I sensed that it was both uh, open enough for me to use and move around in and elastic in some way, but that it was also really uh, specific. And um, I became totally obsessed. I had that moment and I learned two things from that experience. There it is again, that's my favorite one. So I learned two things from that experience. 
Number one, inspiration, the muse, whatever you want to call it, is there all the time. It is in everything that we see. It is in everything that we're touching. It can be the simplest, most normal, regular time and place, and something can hit you. There's no hierarchy as to what you're allowed to use in your artwork, in your writing, in your design work, in anything, even like what you want to choose to listen to. There's no rules. The, everything that we're seeing, that everything that the world is giving us has the potential to bear and hold meaning and grace and significance, everything. Secondly, it's all there, but you have to work for it. You have to show up and you have to be willing to both accept whatever it is that has, has signaled you. This is, I love this image. Um, the idea of a signal that comes from the scatter. The scatter. Life is like such a scatter. And, but sometimes you are called and you, you, uh, something signals you and you hear it. And that's what I see when I, look, when I look at this because from the depths of all of that craziness, there was one little tiny thing that totally got me. So if you want to work for it, what does that mean? What does it mean to really put in the work to um, show up every day and really be willing to like dive into whatever it was that called you that the little detail even if it's so insignificant what does that actually mean for me that meant taking that shape that i found and that i saw and repeating it obsessively so i was painting it i was drawing it I was making collages out of it, I was cutting it up, and then I made a stencil out of it, and then I took that thing that I painted with spray paint and cut that up again, and I did it again and again and again and again. <laughs> These are like 30 images, but I have made that move, that shape, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of times. And what I learned from repeating that so often was that when you, focus in and drill down on one thing. Instead of having less variety and less options and less ideas, I got more. I got more and more and more. So that shape expanded, it stretched, it bent, it flattened out. And from that, I got a vo vocabulary of shapes and forms that I use now. So when I look at the work that I make, all of my paintings, every single one of them. And if you, if you look at my work, you see all these repeated sort of like forms all the time. Every single one of those, its origin, its uh, foundation, at its elemental level comes from that one, just that one shape that I saw almost 10 years ago now. Because I s it took it, I committed to it, I don't, sometimes against my will, I was like, I'm sick of doing this thing, what is the point? Like, I'm getting so bored of it, but there is something that happens when you just repeat something again and again. When it's similar, like an artist who's making things, like making and creating a lot, you sort of are like, well, that's my world. How do I think about something? That's how you think about it. That's how I thought about something, was physically repeating it, drawing it over and over again and again. This is sort of an example of now, this vocabulary of forms and shapes that I use all the time, and they're all related to this one thing. If you choose, the reason these two things are so important, those two things that I learned and why I think that they matter, is if you are, if you start to think that something is too cool for you or too boring for you or something is too high and too complicated, out of your level or beneath you and not interesting, then, and you're also not willing to, if you do get a signal in that scatter to not dive in and really put in the work and follow it wherever it's gonna go, what, that, what happens is that you deny yourself and people around you the chance to experience the best part about being a human in this world, which is our imagination. <laughs> the reason that matters so much is that 
our imaginations um, are hope, love, empathy, forgiveness, all of those things, first and foremost, are acts of our imaginations. Let me make sure I get this right, because I'm getting kind of emotional. <laughs> The last thing that I want to, the image that I want to bring up is something that I've been, it's been in my mind for like at least a year, and it's, it's, a, it's the idea of a kaleidoscope. I'm just going to flip through. You can see some more examples of a lot of my work. Um, a kaleidoscope is an instrument that you place all of these, like, actually it's only a few, normal little everyday bits of material and there are some reflective surfaces, and when you turn the lens, endless and infinite combinations emerge forever, if you want them to. And I love that because I think about that in terms of the process in my studio, that every single thing I'm doing is still always all about this shape. This is her bun, it's her hairdo, and yet I get endless variety I get endless shapes. I get a vocabulary to play with. And it's all coming from, from this one part. The best part of that is you, me, you, we are all kaleidoscopes. You are the instrument through which the boring, normal, everyday little bits of life get a chance to turn into endless and infinite materials for everybody else to enjoy. And that's something that makes our world more generous. It makes our world more fun. It makes us kinder and more awake and more open. And so all of that came from this little cartoon in a kid's book. <laughs> Thank you guys so, so very much. <laughs> so kids, kids books, a lot of you guys already know this, kids books and the illustrations in them are awesome because they are sophisticated, they're clever, they're colorful, and if you're an abstract artist, you see right away the parallel that, there, that exists, which is how can you communicate something the fastest to the most people. And that's to me is also what abstraction is about too. How do other artists feel about picking up an element that they found, that one artist found, and using it in their own work? Yeah. Um, I love the quote, good artists copy, great artists steal. And to me, what that means is that everything is available to us, right? And um, it's your job as an artist when you're digging down in and you're figuring out what that really is about it's your job to make it your own so you you can pull from any source but it's not going to resonate at all unless you've really put your own um, touch to it your own hand your own mind unless you've like knitted and stitched it into your own self and then brought it back out that's the that's the only way so um, it's important to, to talk to each other visually, you know, and, and to try things. That's the other thing. Uh, yes, everything, all this, all this is precious, but if that's true, then also nothing is precious. So there's like an equanimity there, and so don't be afraid to try something out. It's not the end of the road. You do one thing, and then you do another thing to it, and then you do something else. And as long as you're being honest with yourself, and, and if it feels right to you, then you know it's going to go somewhere that's totally new. Yeah, I, I'm always on the lookout for. Do I anticipate that I'll have a new moment where, like this image, grabbed me? Well, there'll be another one in the future. Yes, and they they happen. Um, but I've found that it's they they still it still always has referred back to this one. And so you know, if you're, you know, you're pulling from everywhere, everything is coming from this originally, so all those shapes that you saw that were up on the wall, they all kind of 
eventually became, they animated themselves through the repetition. And then, you know, you see the thing, like it's starting to morph into something and then you saw something in the world that looked just like that thing that was morphing out and you don't know, but it's sort of similar. And then you can kind of give things an assignment and a definition. So I've had like mini moment, mini ones like that, small ones, where I felt like connected to a shape. But this is still has been the strongest one that I've felt. Um, has had the most like power to carry meaning for me. It really, in repeating it so many times, it became a guide for me. And it became this origin figure that every time I was in the studio, you know, I would start at that same place. And it's, it's a lot harder to find something new in a really familiar thing than it is to just go in the studio and every day you do something new. That's easy it's harder to stick with one thing and push past the boredom or the doubt. And, um, and so that's what this has taught me, this one shape and the experience of being with it for like 10 years now and seeing all the places that it's taken. I think that's why it's still so powerful to me. Um, and it's such a moment in time that I think back to. Do I have a routine that keeps me going in the studio? And how do I keep the momentum going in the studio? Uh, a lot of my, my work is about improvising within structure. And so I think one of the things I noticed about this form was that this I could sense that it was going to give me a structure it, within which to play. So there's a few ways that I keep structure in the studio so that I can have these sort of like um, things to bounce, bounce off of. And one of them is uh, the colors that I use, like the paints that I find, I'm still doing that same thing where I'm like hunting around and finding things that just speak to me, colors, and doesn't matter what kind of paint it is, and I bring it all into the studio, and that's what I have, and that's what I'm gonna use. Um, I keep a lot of the work out, like I have, you saw the um, image of the studio space. It's really crowded, and um, I like that a lot because when I see image, I like to, to quickly answer your question, I put things together a lot. I get out the work, I rearrange it. Sometimes if that's all I can do that day because of schedules and stuff, I just go in the studio and I get out some works and I'll either put them up on the wall next to each other or lay them all out. And um, when I come back in the next day, a new connection, a new relationship will often jump out to me. Um, but I. I'm, I'm still, uh, most people experience this, I'm still getting, you know, yanked out of your studio before you're ready to leave. So um, I don't usually, pl I don't plan out like the next move I'm gonna make the next day. I'm always like going in and taking stock of everything and then making a move, you know, doing something. Most of the time it's not that good, you know? Like it, most of the time your paintings aren't where they, where you want them to be that it's just like slogging through and keeping through and waiting for those moments when something something signals. Well, Mike said, do I have muses that are not visual? I listen to music constantly in my headphones. I don't have like speakers. I have, I have a communal studio space with a lot of amazing artists who are here right now. And um, anybody is welcome to come there as well if you want to get a catch of this craziness. Um, I listen to music constantly and it's a mix like I have you know Spotify in my ears all the time and I love that because it's it's another way to like immerse yourself in um, a landscape you know like the studio is a landscape I feel like music when you're you know when it's so close with the headphones I actually like listening to it in headphones because you feel kind of like you're underwater or something and I love that like flow and I always notice like new things about songs or new words or something whenever I'm um, whenever I'm listening. Thank you again. Thanks so much for having me. <laughs>